Hey guys, welcome back. So it's been a little while since I've done a metal detecting video, but I'm back up here in South Carolina next to the old mill. And I noticed the city's done a little work since the last time I was here. The old sidewalk originally ran right directly in front of me there, but they've moved it out about 15 feet closer to the road. So the first thing I'm gonna do is coin shoot this little area with a CTX. And if that doesn't pan out, I'm gonna try my luck with the Equinox and the small coil up under that old tree. That's where Wild Digger and I have already found a few old coins, so I'm sure there's one or two more hiding in there somewhere. Uh, it's been extremely hot lately, so since I'm going to be here for a few days, I'm going to do most of my hunting late in the evening after the sun starts to go down. Um, like I said, we've already hunted this place five or six times, so I don't expect to find a whole lot. But you know how that goes. You never get it all. We'll see what happens. All right, guys, just got a, just got a solid 1245 signal at about six inches down and popped out the first silver for the day. It's a mercury dime. And I believe that date's a 1944, but I can't really tell. Maybe you can see it better than I can. Anyway, off to a good start. Let's see if we can find some more. So I decided to try this curb strip next to the old ball field here, and I just got a 1246 signal and popped out another mercury dime. Best I can tell, the date looks to be a 1936. I'll let you hear this one before I dig it. 1146. 1145, depth about four inches. That's all the other mercury dime was, so pretty good chance that'll be silver too. Well, that one just turned out to be a wheat penny, which is uh, kind of surprising. It was reading awful high for a penny. But anyway, I'll check around a little more and make sure I didn't overlook another coin. Let you guys hear this one before I dig it. 1133, 1134, 1134. Those are Indian head numbers, so I'll dig it up and show you what it is. Yeah, those are also rotten zinc numbers, and that's exactly what it was. Uh, had an 1112 signal and way down in the bottom of that hole. I just pulled that thing out, whatever that is. I first thought it was a hand grenade. Still may be, I don't know what it is, but it's heavy. Some kind of weight, I guess. Anyway, get it cleaned up and get a better look at it later. That's a pretty good deeper nickel signal. Right, stand by, I'll dig it up and show you what it is. Well, that one did turn out to be a nickel. It's a, a V nickel, and I'm not real sure about the date. Maybe you guys can see it on the camera. Anyway, that one was down there a good seven, seven and a half inches, which is not too shabby with a six inch coil. The Equinox loves nickels. Right over there is where I got the uh, V nickel. I'm still hunting up under this old tree. And right here, maybe three or four inches down, I just got a wheat penny spill. I was hoping there'd be some silver in there with it, but no such luck. Anyway, it's getting dark here, so I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day. Well, I didn't get as much as on some of the previous trips, but I guess that's to be expected. I uh, did get a few keepers. Got somebody's set of keys there, a cobalt 10 millimeter socket, some kind of brass ring, and that's either a pistol ball or a, a fishing weight, I'm not really sure. Got a nice little pile of clad. Most of that came out of the curb strips. Um, never did clean this up, but that's some kind of iron weight. I don't think it's a window weight. Uh, I got a total of eight wheat pennies, one 1910 V nickel, and two mercury dimes. I believe the dates on those were 44 and 36. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Happy hunting, and I'll see you next time.